Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 42 of Run to the Hills. This week, we catch up with Bob Graham Round champion, Gary Thwaites, and uh, also Bob Graham champion, I suppose, Beth Pascal, all about um, her time in America training, ready for the Western States. And we wanted to play this this week because the Western States is fast approaching. Um, and we've got, as we, well, now we are actually famous for tipping top runners uh, doing great things. We've got high hopes for Beth. So it's really interesting to hear how she found training at altitude. She's finding life as a professional athlete. So we'll play that a little later in the show. But first, Gaza, how are you feeling? <laughs> I'm all right. Actually, you know, top tip for any athletes want to do well, come on the show. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> we've got a good run, haven't we? <laughs> I'm feeling, I'm feeling a little bit pooly, actually. Um, just a bit cold. I get an achy eye. I had an ulcer in my eye. and um, yeah, I yeah. didn't know you could get an ulcer in your... Are you sure? Is this a thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm not too sure how it came about. But when I get run down, yeah. I feel my uh, right eye tingling. And if it gets oh. really bad, it's, it's not, I can't do anything because I can't really see properly. Um, and I think, obviously, my exploits through the week... It all oh. comes out, doesn't it? It like comes yeah. out of every pore. <laughs> I remember when I used to do Ironman, I used to then go straight back to school and start teaching. And my skin used to like erupt in terrible like acne. Oh, and I used to be really yeah. embarrassed because oh, I'd goodness. have to like stand in front of all these teenagers who of course just point and laugh and probably yeah. draw pictures and hold them up in assembly and stuff. And um, <laughs> yeah, it comes out. It's horrible, isn't it? It's like your body just goes, oh. Relax, and then you get don't ill, it? don't you? Yeah. And you get Ill, always get ill. I'm feeling a bit like, a bit kind of sorry for myself like that. My ankles ache a bit, but, you know, I'm running with the dog. Anyone who's seen my straw, I'm out there again with Rex, just nice, easy miles. But I did notice when I popped Rex's harness on, it was a little bit tighter than normal. So we both. <laughs> oh, Rex's <laughs> harness was a bit yeah. tighter. <laughs> I was like, Aww. oh my goodness, Lisa, this is a bit snug. So he's, um, yeah, he's, he's been out running. And we, we have to do it early on because it's pretty warm at the moment. So yeah. But he's been more upbeat with that. What else have we been doing? Yeah, I've been hatching plans for next journey. So you're there. You're there in your stage of recovery. You've got nothing much else to do. I was yeah. complimenting you because you'd even color coded the podcast <laughs> script. Is a big word to throw. Out. <laughs> what what our oh, spreadsheet is, isn't it? But I was like, <laughs> you're clearly not training much, are you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what's so, next? What, what's you? Th what are you thinking now? Well, yeah. So we've got a few little hundreds that. Um, granular canal race. Oh yeah, I've, you've mentioned that before. Yeah, I'm quite mentally invested in that. So that, if I could get into that, that would be good. A friend, and I felt really flattered actually, he kind of put to me, oh, I could see you doing the spine race. And I was like, no way. But just that someone thought I could do it. I thought, oh, yeah, it's... Uh, of course you so, could do it. So I've checked the entry and everything. I've been on the way. Just a long walk with a backpack. <laughs> well, yeah, that's Jokes, funny. jokes, everybody that's done yeah. it. And then the Centurion running, you know, especially with the podcast, I've been exposed to that, th those guys down there. And I listen to their podcast when they get one out, actually. They're not very... <laughs> Um, so that yeah, you've good. got to go and do what you've got to go and do one of those races. I might be hatching a plan to go and do one of their races later on. Um, sorry if you're watching this, I'm flapping my arms around because the flies, <laughs> the fly, the flies are back. Um, yeah, you've got to go and do one of those races. I'd like that. Yeah, and you the, think the, you've got another big event in you this year? Well, yeah, I have. Yeah. Two, well, you've in, got you've got the St Cuthbert's way. So that's sick. That's 100k. Um, but that might not go ahead. I'm not too sure what's going on with that. With the our relaxation has kind of been put back by a bit, and because St Cuthbert's Way goes into Scotland, there might be some oh, issues. Stop it! Yeah, I'm, I'm not 100 percent sure what's going on with that. They haven't got anything out yet. I think they're waiting for the last announcement. So, so what does the non-relaxation of relaxation mean? I'm not clear. Because I know that people were saying, well, that's great because like Lakeland 50 and 100 can be run like a normal, a proper yeah. race. So I think maybe it is like a phased start and stuff like that. So many people in one place at, at one time. Um, but yeah, I don't really know what the, I know. Parker, and I've seen a few things to do with Parker. That's been delayed a bit, hasn't yeah, it? Yeah, so it might be something to just do with the amount of people gathering in one space. But what that means as far as events in Scotland are concerned, I don't know. So fingers crossed. My, oh, can you imagine being an event organizer? Oh. <laughs> 
absolutely dreadful. But the other thing that's on my radar is a West Highland Weir race. <gasps> and yeah. close to my heart, obviously the hard modes is pretty close to me. So there's a few simmering away. I need to do one that I'm mentally invested in because they're all mm. big. So you can't do one because of the, the medal or whatever at the end of it. You've got to love the whole process. So early tip is probably Lake 100, but I don't know if I can technically get in because of the qualifying. They don't have a list of events you have to do, but I think you have to have done a certain type of event and hopefully the Bob Graham round will satisfy. Yeah, surely. I got the email. I got the email from the Bob Graham round club saying congratulations. And uh, hopefully the uh, every year the new, new entrants get invited to a dinner. So I'll get the suit out. <laughs> Did did he uh, get the wait, chaps then. out out yeah. on town? <laughs> yeah, out out. Well, yeah, but what about you? My goodness, I've just yabbered on loads there. Oh you? well. <laughs> um. Yeah, all good. I had a I had a bit of a down week last week. I think it was the come down from your Bob Graham round. Oh. I just felt a bit, you know, low after all that excitement. I saw your sorry. I put it in. I saw your Instagram story and. I don't know how to work in stories, so apologies <laughs> if I didn't respond or respond quick enough, but that was really sweet. Are you ready? Oh, anytime. <laughs> yeah, I just, do you know what? As a, that sort of ties into my thinking. Um, but yeah, I love the fact that you invested in a goal and you didn't achieve it straight away and you had to go back and you had to work hard and you had to, you had to put in so many hours well you and neil invest yeah. so much time and and i something i'm trying to get into my kids you know every day that this isn't so you just can't order it off amazon yeah you know? that'd be nice <laughs> wouldn't that be nice but we're around 199 free delivery <laughs> but um that investment in a goal and then not achieving it first time round and going back and looking at what happened and i reckon the accumulation then of you actually achieving it was so much more than if you just kind of like yeah. Killian and turned up and rocked around. <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely. definitely. I think I definitely did appreciate and enjoy it more. Yeah. I think, um, I think, yeah, that's huge. So, uh, yeah, last week I felt we, I did my long run on Monday and um, wrecking this race I'm doing in a, in a few weeks' time, months' time. <laughs> and oh, I felt terrible felt terrible um like every little uphill you know and round here there's no easy running so it had like 1200 meters of climbing in like 15k yeah. um and uh yeah i was like oh no i feel why do i feel so terrible because i'm meant to be so fit but uh looking back on my i've done a lot of hard fast training yeah. really hard fast training and um that's the beauty of then having a coach because i can then i put my plan oh my god i felt terrible Terrible, you know. I'm, oh my god, I'm so terrible! I'm so terrible! I can't ever run again. I am yeah. not ever running again. And then they come back and go, "You're all right. Take a breath. Calm down. You're being a yeah. little bit dramatic. Take an easy day." And then, um, so it was all uh, just being over dramatic. It was. All I think fine. it's great that coaches have coaches. We talked to Damien last week, and he's got a coach and. So it's a great advert. I know I'm not coach, so I'm the best person to say this, but it's a great advert for people who want coaches when a coach has a different coach. Yeah, I love it because I get my sessions because when I don't, I don't always, I'm not always coached, but when I don't have one, my training definitely suffers because I can't, I write everyone else's plan and then I'm like... <sighs> what yeah. should I do? It's yeah. like, I can't, I don't, can't invest that mental energy into my own plan. I like having somebody overseeing it because I either overdo it or yeah. I underdo it because I, because, you know, if you've got kids and you're busy, you, you yeah. feel tired a lot of the time and you need somebody invested in you to go, now's the time to push. Now's the yeah. time to relax and somebody else to trust the process as well as you. Yeah. And it's just somebody else to, to, for me, a lot of, I, I say, I think I need to do this. I feel, I felt good. So I did a couple more. It's yeah. very much my plan, but it's just somebody else and new ideas. I love, and I feel it's per professional development as yeah. well, because there's new ideas, there's new ways of doing, you know, cause running is just running, but mm. everybody looks at it differently. Everybody trains people differently. So yes, I love it. So, so we talked a lot about why I was tired and why I felt so terrible and um and he very wisely said that you know sometimes if you go and do a run and you expect it to be easy and then it's not easy yeah. we then panic and so he was like right take that mindset so on saturday i had my hardest ever session to do 
uh, and this is a classic Eddie Day in that I had didn't have one child was at a football tournament, one child was playing tennis, one child was at a birthday party. It was like 25 degrees, and I had an hour slot in the oh. middle of the day of which I could run up this mountain. Unfortunately, the mountain was also open to mountain bikers coming down at the oh, same wow. time, but it was the only mountain I could get to. Yeah. Grabbed a mate and said, can you look after Evie after a tennis lesson for 15 minutes? Because the whole session is going to take me an hour and 15 minutes. Yeah, yeah, she said, cool. So, uh, so the preparation for the session was right. Instead of thinking this is going to be easy, you know, go into it thinking this is going to be really, really hard. And then when it is really hard, you're prepped for the it's fact okay. that it's going to be really, it's, it's going to be okay, it's going to be okay. So uh, I made myself laugh because I was like, okay, I'm going to put the key in the hurt locker, <laughs> get myself in, <laughs> shut it up and throw that key away and off I go. So I literally, from the mo I had three minutes to warm up because I only had this designated slot. Straight uphill, straight, I just had like, right, you just got to go straight into it and that's it. You just got to go put yourself. So I put myself in that hurt locker so hard. I was like, I was literally like blood coming from my eyes balls oh trying goodness. to run up this mountain really hard at the same time bikers coming down trying not to die and they'd be like really friendly and i'd be like <laughs> it's just i can't even take my eyes off this bit in front of me um but it was really good and i was like i yeah i haven't hurt that much but afterwards super tired so i was like right everything's gonna the next few days training is gonna feel really hard even though it says easy on the plan yeah I probably only just recovered from it today. So, but did it, tick, done, another hard session in the box. And now, um, as you mentioned, I'm in my casual wear today because <laughs> tomorrow I'm off around Mont Blanc in three do, days. Yay. Do, do, do. I've packed my backpack. It's so heavy. I can hardly lift it. How I'm going to run with it. <laughs> Good training. I'm going to eat all cheer charge bars in the first hour and it'll be a lot lighter. Uh, so I'm slightly nervous about the weight of my backpack and I'm slightly nervous about traversing the snow crevasses. Ooh. Somebody's doing it and is a few days ahead of us and they put on Instagram stories that they've never been so scared. <laughs> I was like, why am I watching this? Um, so we've got crampons, we've got poles, um, and as Bryn said to me, maybe like as well, these people, you're re I'm really used to running on snow, traversing mm -hmm. snow, you know, I've done a lot on my skis. So maybe the people that are putting out, you know, it's, it's really hard are also quite, not quite as mountain savvy as us. Oh yeah. yeah. Let's hope. Um, we're also trying to do it in three days because that's the <laughs> only time slot we've got. And with the snow, it's going to be that much slower. So we're going to yeah. have to be cracking along um to get to i think it's the first day is going to be the hardest it's only about it's about 50 60k with about about 3500 meters of climbing yeah i was going to ask you how the days broke down no it's yeah. not a huge huge time it will be mainly the time will be if a lot of it is but anything above like 2200 meters is snow so then you yeah. can't you're literally like oh, stomping through this potholes sounds amazing <laughs> So it, I'm sure it's going to have epic highs and some silent lows. But there's four of us. There's going to be a lot of noise, a lot of chat. <laughs> and first time I've left the kids for like two years. So when you get to these refugees, you said you'd book those out. What, what are they? You know, I've never been in one. Are they varying <laughs> levels of comfort? or <laughs> Exactly, they are. So um, you book, yeah, you just, uh, you just book you know, you have to book for the for the Mont Blanc trail for going around them. You have to book like months in advance. Mm -hmm. Not at the moment, though, which is why we wanted to do it now, because nobody yeah. can travel. So they're quite quiet. So, yeah, you just book it in and you book a demi pension, which is board and you get an evening meal and you get <laughs> breakfast and you take your sleeping bag liner. Super simple. But they're in our first one is at 2,800 meters in the most beautiful random locations and they have a guardian who looks after it all season and they sort of yeah. welcome you and show you to your room very there's nothing you know there's nothing there's no wi-fi it's not a premier inn uh, <laughs> and then it's it's great though because everybody's got their you know there's kit hanging up everywhere yeah. you might have a wash you might not they're a bit of like a yha but sort of in the a little bit more remote and then you mm. normally have really good food because sort of, sort of it's always cheap heavy yeah. cheese based food yes. um and wine <laughs> and then carrying wine or is that already of oh, course yeah yeah <laughs> two or three bottles a day <laughs> and then yeah you get breakfast and everyone's up you know everyone goes to bed by 
eight, nine. Yeah. <laughs> and then you're up at like, we're going to get up at like six, have breakfast and be back on the trail again at seven. On to the next stretch. So yeah, it's going to be super exciting to have a little adventure. I'm sure um, I'll have lots to tell you all about. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I've got a few people about to start and I'm sure people listening about to start fingers crossed training for UTMB. Um, awesome. So I'm as basically another just bit of professional development, looking at all the climbs. And you're going to uh, torture us with Instagram. Uh, lots absolutely, of... I'm going to tag you in on everything. <laughs> no stories. Don't, I don't know how to do stories. <laughs> Hi, Gaza, me again. <laughs> what you doing? Look at these things. I'm like, I can't get rid of them. I don't know what to do. <laughs> like a messenger. I don't know how to see the message. It's. Uh, I don't well, know. you go in the little arrow bit, and then it yeah. opens the messages. Well, it doesn't seem to, I don't know. It doesn't... Do you have children that have can sort of no, old manage enough. your, manage you your social that? media? No, do you not let them on any of that sort of? Well, we do, but then I don't, they, oh, Esme's probably old enough, actually. Esme's on Instagram, yeah, George isn't. Um, I should ask her, shouldn't I? She should. She can manage your me. social media now that you've gone viral. Well, yeah, spoiler, she is my, she poses as me on my YouTube channel, comments on people's videos. <laughs> <laughs> well... <laughs> Uh, because you, you can pay YouTube to advertise your um, videos, kind of get, bumps them up the rankings. And I thought, well, what's the point of doing that? I might as well pay Esme to interact with like-minded creators. And then that also then promotes your content because it sees your active part, active member of YouTube. So I'm paying Esme kind of pocket money, exaggerated pocket money to just comment on. Do you see what she actually comments? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's just like what I do. I'll go video. What a lovely place to, you know, it's, it's just. Oh, I love yeah. it. It's family yeah. business. <laughs> it's cost me a fortune. <laughs> she like, does she charge per word? <laughs> well, um, it's very trust-based actually. <laughs> <laughs> so she might be pleased to me. <laughs> Dad, that's another 20 quid. Yeah. Oh, well, I should have a little clock, but no, 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 it's great. I'd rather pay her, give her some money than, the man, Google, whatever he is. Oh, yeah. Right, let's talk races. Yes. Do you want to go first? Yeah. South Downs Way 100, uh, race close to my heart. It was hot. Gosh, it was a hot day. Uh, mm. They had a rolling start, and I know lots of people opted to start super early. Um, but beautiful sunrises, beautiful sunsets on all the social media. Peter Windross won it in a steaming fast 15 hours 30 and Alice Robinson in 18 hours 48 it was hard to track that race because there's rolling starts you can't tell who's in the lead yeah um and so you're watching it you can see on the map but then you don't know what time they've started um I so... think that was it I saw an image of first finisher but he wasn't the winner <laughs> it's so bizarre isn't it yeah. I'm not sure how I feel about doing a race like that being well <laughs> I think I did uh, to the Helvellyn similar. You have a choice when to set off as long as you get back by a certain time. So yeah, you just, I think I mentioned on a previous podcast, you get in thinking, oh yeah, I'm, I'm fifth. And then slowly during the day, you just get nudged further and further down. <laughs> I'm very driven in the competition on these yeah. races. I, I would like to pretend that I was driven by the trails and the scenery and the nature, but I'm absolutely not. My whole pur- If I'm on a start line of a race, my whole purpose yeah. is to destroy the field. <laughs> <laughs> and but it's myself, impossible. And but myself he... impossible in the in the, in the same vein. So yeah, I'm not sure. Like, well, oh, I think all my trail races hit over here are going to be rolling starts. Yeah. So you I just remember... have to head down and just work your butt off. On that two day Velen, I raced the guy John Butters that from the last checkpoint to the finish. I didn't know when he'd started. I didn't even have a clue. But he was in front of me, so I just thought, well. I guess that's what you have to do. You just have to pick off person after person and just keep hoping that you're working as hard. It's an honest effort. That's all it is, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I was trying. My goodness me. (laughs) Next one I saw was the Lake District Challenge, and uh, I couldn't find the full results, but I do know Michael King took the overall win, and Michael King actually is a friend of the show. He listens to the podcast. So, Good job, Michael. Yeah, well done, Michael. Uh, Fantastic. What's the next one? The GB Ultra Pennine Barrier Ultra. My goodness, man, it's a mouthful. First was uh, James 
Lagi, is that correct? A27 and 40. And the first lady was Lorraine Slater. And I think that was a course record for the ladies. Yeah, I saw that. Course and record. nine hours, 36 minutes and five seconds. And then got a bit more Bob Graham round action. AD, if you want to have a little wow. sin. We popped in your interview with Charlie Parkinson, which you did record a, a couple of months ago. Um, yeah. But we thought that it went really well with your Bob Graham attend. And then, and then you'd spotted that he was going to go for a Bob Graham round. Enough. And uh, he not only <laughs> completed it in 18 hours 58, but he broke the under 20 record. He looked pretty tired. Yeah, but that's good, isn't it? I mean, he'd absolutely worked his socks off. <laughs> wow. So huge kudos. If you haven't listened to last week's, have a listen to Charlie, a young rising star um, of the ultra world. But also, what a nice guy. Head, head firmly screwed on his shoulder. Yeah. And a real supportive family, I think. Um, and also, I think I mentioned last week, too, he's not just rocking up. He's completely invested in the fells and the trails. He loves it all. His whole network, his family. It's just, yeah, it's, it just sounds like a magical environment that, he, that he's in. So, yeah, well done, Charlie. Super stoked. And he's agreed to come back on the show. So, I'll have, a, I'll have a catch up chat with him one day. And the next was Emma Roper. Now, kind of completely, not completely opposite. She did win the challenge, but 23 hours and 56 minutes. So that oh. would have been quite a stressful. She, was, she wouldn't have been strolling into Keswick, <laughs> would she, Gaza? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, like I say, a, a, a different set of emotions, but um, definitely still left it all out there. And like I say, I, I always said before, like my Bob, if it was 23, 59, I'd be okay. But that run into Keswick would be quite stressful. But yeah, well done, everybody. Fantastic. This week, we caught up with Beth Pascal. Uh, actually, Beth Pascal's the fastest woman on the BGR as well, isn't she? Right, she, yeah. she talks a little bit about that, her training going into Western States, her life as a professional athlete, and of course, all our very wise and insightful questions, Netflix, snacks of choice. Um, we, we delve deep into Beth Pascal's life. It was great to catch up with her. Uh, so here's her interview. Hi, everyone. Thanks for tuning into the Run to the Hills podcast and thanks to Chia Charge for sponsoring the show. Chia Charge is about people having real food on the go that is made from ingredients you have heard of and they taste great too. They are part of the 1% for the Planet charity and that means they give 1% of their sales, not profit, to environmental charities they believe in. If you like the sound of this, then head over to www.chiacharge.co.uk. We are delighted to welcome to the show. Um, we are super fans, aren't we, Gary? I think we're more yep. nervous about talking to Beth than we were when we had to talk to Alish McColgan. Yeah. Uh, because Beth is truly a hero in our sport. Uh, one of the fastest women, if not one of the fastest trail runners in the world right now. Um, she's fresh, fresh from a win at the Canyons 100 uh, kilometer race this year already and is busy now prepping for western states in not long it's not long uh six weeks she'll know the exact um she'll know the exact weeks i'm sure hi beth welcome to the show how are you what have you been doing today been running already yeah well thank you very much for that generous introduction uh, i'm good thanks yeah i'm currently in flagstaff in arizona uh, it was an early start today. I drove down to a slightly lower altitude to get my run in for some better feelings on my run um, <laughs> than training up high. And yeah, it was beautiful. I was running in Sedona, which is this truly incredible desert type landscape with red rocks, like red spiky rocks. Um, yeah, it's an amazing, amazing place. So yeah, I got my run in before it got super, super hot. And yeah, it's it's great to be talking to to you guys. Back in back, well, I'm not, I'm in France, but Gary's in cold, horrible England. And um we should just tell our listeners now that this this is last year you made a decision um to become to throw yourself into running full time. You're a pediatric ped I can't say the word, pediatri pediatric doctor. Is that right? Um, yeah. yeah, and you made the decision to try a year, maybe longer, I don't know, uh, as a full time athlete, and then COVID hit. Can you tell us a little bit about what happened last year and then how this year is going so far? Yeah, so I planned to take it, was only six months I was going to take off work. Um, and that's 
kind of the window that I could just about squeeze in Western States and UTMB. Um, oh, love it. So yeah, I th- that obviously didn't happen, um, and I'm very lucky in that. You know, if there's ever a time they need doctors, it was <laughs> it was very easy to change my mind and yeah. and and just work right through. So um, yeah, that was an easy decision to make. Things things didn't look good um, last year, so I did the Bob Graham round instead. And, and yeah, I guess I'd always kind of planned to try again this year. Um, but it was actually a much harder decision because when I had to make the decision about whether to take the time off, you, know, you have to plan these things a long time in advance and to get all the necessary sort of approval from work and things. Um, yeah, and it was a big risk. I didn't really know what would happen. Um, there was still a lot of uncertainty sort of the back end of last year and even, you know, the first few months of this year. And I'd yeah. kind of taken a risk. I was going to go for it. Um, but, yeah, everything kind of happened last minute. And I so far, things have gone really well. And I've been really lucky that the races that well maybe not the exact races I'd planned to do but some of the races I planned to do have um gone ahead and I've been able to get out to the states to race out here and it's looking good for for western states um obviously anything can happen yeah <laughs> nothing surprises us anymore when things get cancelled but you know things are looking as good as they can be um for the next few months at least. How have you found the switch from having a a job and being at home, home comforts and your dog to now being... (laughs) now being abroad um, and living life as a full-time athlete? Because lots of people think that life as a full-time athlete is very glamorous and you see all your Salomon wonderful pictures of um, people jumping on rocks and stuff. Um, How have you found the transition? To be honest, so the first few weeks, I was really, really busy with just uh, planning stuff. Admin, I mean, yeah. get, getting out to the US was basically a full-time job in emails just to just to get out here. Um, and I went on the Salomon a training camp in the Canaries and then was racing out here. So I actually, I don't feel like I've had that much time of not just training and doing nothing mm. else, to be honest. And still, um, various other things kind of filling my time still hoping to have a wedding just after western states as well so thinking about that um and yeah I think certainly at the start when I first stopped working I did have a lot of self-doubt when we didn't know the races were going to happen I thought you know what am I doing have I made the right decision lots of people told me that you know races aren't going to happen what are you doing stay at work um and I did have a lot of self-doubt then but now yeah I'm content I would say um I have enough meaning in my life just doing what I'm doing right now um and I think knowing that it's only for a short period of time helps as well um you know if it's like I'd quit my job and this was it then I think I would be struggling uh more with you know you know is this the right thing to do um yeah and and finding enough meaning just just with running but knowing that I'm going back to work um after it it makes it really exciting I guess doesn't it Mm. you've got like you've gifted this pocket of time that might be just like this once so it's it's got an end and you can just throw yourself into it with with you know with joy and and just go for it and but it's not endless that there is a you know and so much else to look forward to as well a wedding yeah yeah I mean I think I do slightly struggle with finding a balance between like filling this time with so much stuff because I think I'll never have the opportunity to have this much time again yeah and also trying to get enough rest and behave (laughs) more like an athlete (laughs) rather than you know filling my day with um various things all day every day and actually not getting because I I had to remind myself that the point of this is that I can get a better quality recovery um because I'm not at work and have you seen that in your sort of like training that you are getting more recovery you're finding the sessions more beneficial um I think initially when I was in the UK yes 
definitely. Um, here, I think, <laughs> as we were talking about before we started recording, um, I have struggled with, because I'm at altitude now, I have struggled with um, sort of the adaptation and haven't been sleeping very well at all for most of my time here. Um, but yeah, certainly, you know, if I was working, it'd be, I'd be even worse situation in terms of rest. So, so yeah, definitely. I think, I mean, it's difficult to say, it's difficult to say, but for sure I wouldn't, this whole thing wouldn't have been possible if I was working right now. <laughs> I was I was hopefully going to go and talk a bit about the uh, Canyons 100K, if that's okay. A lot of our listeners probably aren't familiar with what the course is like. Could you kind of explain a bit what it was like, the kind of terrain underfoot maybe, the altitudes and stuff like that? Yeah, so the Canyons 100K is um, in the same area as Western States and the course this year was different to what it normally is. Normally they have a series of out and backs um, on the Western States course, but to make it a more COVID friendly course, so runners up passing each other as much, they did a point to point race. Oh, wow. And a majority of that was reverse Western States trail. Um, so mainly uphill. <laughs> um, so you start n not far off sea level and finish at around, it's not super high, like 1600 meters. Yeah. Um, and yeah, mainly good trails. Um, not all like super smooth, but mainly pretty fast trails. Um, and maybe, mm, I can't even remember now, I'll get this wrong. I think it was about 4,500 meters of climb in total. Yeah. Um, but I think you've, it doesn't, it doesn't sound like an awful lot of climb, but I think you forget that you need the downhills to recover between the yeah. climbs and we didn't get as many downhills. <laughs> um, so usually it's pretty hot, um, even in April, but we were lucky that it cooled right down, um, for the race day. So yeah, it's ideal conditions. Um, yeah, but it, it was it was hard. It was hard. I found it hard, to be honest. <laughs> and what time of day would the race start? Oh, I think it was 5 a.m. Oh, I my think. goodness. <laughs> That's quite early. Um, oh, it's only, only last a day, though. You were 30 minutes in front of the uh, next lady. What, did, did it feel like a, a close race? Or, or, or were you kind of, I suppose, I don't know if there was an event that kind of made the second lady fall back a bit? If I'm honest, during the race, I had no idea where I, I mean, I knew I was in the lead, um, yeah. but I had no idea where the next woman was. So I was basically running my own race. Um, I had no crew or anything. I was, I kept asking um, people at aid stations, like, where's, where's the next woman? And no one really told me at one point I was told 10 minutes. Yeah. Um, and that was right near the end, actually. So I, I couldn't really relax, even though that was clearly inaccurate. I couldn't really completely relax yeah um so yeah I was running my own race I was kind of conscious that I didn't want to push any harder than I needed to yeah. I wanted to you know there's no point I didn't need to win the race by 30 minutes yeah um um and no I think I don't think anything dramatic happened behind me um I think you know the next few places were much harder fought than my own I think there were you know the next girls were racing hard right to the finish I know yeah. second and third were really close yeah um yeah I think I just think I just was fit and had <laughs> a good day to be honest <laughs> and would you be allowed piercers in that event um normally I know it's pretty common in the states isn't it to have a, a, a piercer with you I'm not sure about canyons maybe I think I think you are normally allowed just yeah. not this year um, but for Western States this year, we are allowed paces as usual. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> and yeah, talk about Western States. Obviously, 2019 was a really good year for you. Fourth finish, I believe. Why Western States? Is it what, what is kind of so special about that event? I think I like it because it's kind of small yeah. and intimate. And because it's so hard for most people to get in, every single person there is like living their dream yeah. on that day so cool. right mm. yeah it's not like you know everyone is there it's such a special occasion for every yeah. single person there aren't many people there um it's got a really nice i mean everyone says a race has a nice atmosphere it's just different to say you're 
big European races like UTMB. And I really like the fact that it's it's really small and it's yeah. just it's just really special for that reason. And I think for when I was here in 2019, never been to the US before and yeah. We just had such a great experience the whole time we were here. We came out early and we camped in the forest on the course for a few weeks. And oh, wow. everyone we met was just so friendly. Um, there's so much space we hardly saw in a body. Um, oh, wow. And the whole experience was just was just incredible. I think a lot of people probably <clears throat> who read Dean Carnassus's book, that was their kind of first, um, UK-based anyway, that was their first kind of introduction to the Western States. And, yeah, it sounds, sounds fantastic. And what are your go- goals for the for Western States? Are you aiming for a podium finish this time? Uh, yeah, that would be nice. Um, <laughs> I mean, you can, you can never... I don't tend to put, like, goals like that, like I want to come first or be in the top three or whatever, because you yeah. can't control what other people, what happens to other people on the day. Yeah. Um, I know I'm fit. And as long as I can um, turn up in a not, not tired um, and, and everything go well on the day, then I think I've got a good chance of being on the podium, but you know, um, I, yeah, I just want to have a good race out there and we'll see what happens. Do you suffer from nerves at all, you know, when you're racing? Is that you kind of anxious in the in the taper or anything like that? I like to think I get less nervous now than I used to. I certainly used to get nervous. Um, and, yeah, I do really struggle with sleeping before races. Um, I, I don't know. I think the last few races I haven't been nervous at all, I have to say. Um, with this like maybe because I've my build-up has been different and I put more into my build-up I'll get more nervous but I'm also consciously trying to to tell myself that it's you know whatever whatever happens like this has been an experience just being out here and preparing in this way and not try to think too much about the result because you know anything can happen with these races so (laughs) um yeah just trying to yeah I'm just putting emphasis on on like trying to make the most of this and and do my best but not thinking about the result too much um because otherwise yeah I would get I would put lots of pressure on myself and get super nervous and I don't want to do that (laughs) and how has it worked I'm really you know I've seen um full disclosure I follow you on Strava so I see you've been in Spain and then in the US and obviously with all the kind of travel restrictions as an international athlete how how I'm super curious. Yeah, how how does that look for you? Um, it's, it's kind of different um, for each country. So for the the US, as you probably know, the borders are still closed, um, and I managed to get a national interest exemption waiver from the US Olympic Committee um, as an athlete to come out here and race. Um, which was, as I was explaining, a lot of, a lot of emails. <laughs> um, and that has to come with support from British Athletics who apply for it for you. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, going to Spain, I think I went out to Spain the day after the borders opened. And as that was um, full work and um, we had an invitation from the local government, that was, you know, all... Um, <laughs> all uh, within within the law so yeah um uh yeah I think I mean I, I feel like I, I guess I did get some criticism for for traveling okay. um but I think that's from people who mainly didn't don't uh, they they struggle to see what the difference is between like the everyday runner and and then what we're trying to do as trail runners yeah um, just because we're running mm-hmm. the same races um but yeah i it doesn't bother me that much i think people are a bit more relaxed now and certainly as things are opening up in the uk and in europe a bit more people of people of people are yeah they're happier i think well i think half of half of england jumped on a plane yesterday and went to portugal by the <laughs> <laughs> i heard that on the radio when boris came back and went no no no, no you're not meant to be going on holiday come back everybody come back <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Take responsibility <laughs> for yourself. <laughs> do you put? I'm just interested. Do you prefer races over maybe a, a, a more low key FKT? I, I, 
I probably would have to say races if I had to choose between doing one or the other for the rest yeah. of my life. I would say races for sure. Um, but the Bob Brown round, there, I mean, there are a few others that I would be interested in. I guess I'm more interested in, I mean, sometimes it's fun to do something a bit a bit different as, as a project. Um, like I, I ran the Kate Rath Trail with Damien Hall a few years ago, and that was really fun. Yeah. Um, but I think that the FKTs, that I think I'm just a competitive person, and I, I like <laughs> to pick things that are really going to challenge me that I don't know are possible. Yeah. So, yeah, if I was going to pick an FKT, it probably would be less of a low key one and something that probably I didn't really think was possible. Like when I tried the Bob Graham last year. Yeah. Um, but, but yeah, for now, um, racing seems like a novelty again. So I'll stick to racing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm really scared to race when it, when it happens. Um, I think I've got a physical race in July and that's going to be quite, okay. cause I've been spoiled just going off to the fells for hours and hours mm. and pretty much nobody around, but yeah, on the start line, that's going to be pretty, pretty freaky. How would you, would you taper differently for, for an FKT? I know because you say with the Bob Graham run, for example, you can be a bit flexible about the start date. You know, if you get a bad weather window, then you can move it. Or would you just taper and fingers crossed you went on your planned day? Yeah, I would approach your taper the same way, I think. Um, and there's always going to be some risk there when you're planning an FKT. Yeah. Um, and you just have to hope for the best. Um, but that's just part of it, isn't it? Um, I was lucky and I only changed my round by one day in the end yeah. because of the weather, but it could have easily happened that I have to put it off for a couple of weeks or something and that breaks up your, your training, but that's just part of it, I think, and a risk you have to take. Eddie and I chatted earlier about strength and conditioning during the taper. <clears throat> Do, yeah, are you kind of diligent with that kind of side of things? Yeah, I do. I do strength and conditioning two or three times a week, fairly religiously. Um, and it's difficult to know really whether it's helping or not, but I'm too scared to. That's exactly stop it. what Gary said. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah geez, I'm not injured, so why would I stop doing it? Yeah. Um, and. Yeah, at the moment I'm mainly doing like core, like body weight type exercises, and I'll probably stop doing that a week before the race. Um, if sometimes, sometimes of the year I do sort of lift dumbbells and things, nothing crazy, but and maybe I'd stop stop lifting heavier weights about ten days before. Um, yeah. But most body weight exercises yeah. are fine to to do right up until a race, to be honest. I'm just yeah. making notes. I'm making notes for myself. <laughs> <laughs> well, when, if, a, if a pro athlete is doing it, then I think well, that's good enough. That's good enough for me. <laughs> yeah. If, yeah. If, if you'll indulge me for a bit with Bob Graham round, it seems like I take up about 70% of the show talking about the Bob Graham round at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it was, my goodness me, 14 hours and 34 minutes. So you had a pretty good round. I've just got a little bit of detailed questions. If, you, if your memory can go back. Did you go when you did uh kind of going to scar fell did you go lord's rig or did someone get a rope for you and you climbed up broad stand can you remember that yeah we did we did broad stand oh, yes yeah. my my husband and his friend were up there did a great job um yeah so they had a harness waiting for me at the bottom wow um <laughs> stepped into the harness um up the rope didn't take very long at all i can't oh. remember exactly how long it to, to get from Scarfell Pike to Scarfell, but yeah, it was pretty slick and all down to the guys with the rope. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, it's interesting. Like I, I had done it in training and um, it felt okay. It felt harder than I was expecting actually, but you never know, like I've never climbed anything like with 40 hard miles in my legs. You never yeah. really know how your body's going to react so for me it just it made sense to have a harness there just just it's just not worth the risk is it you no. could pull up a rope um but yeah um who knows if you're gonna get cramp or something halfway <laughs> yeah. up and it could, could be pretty sketchy so <laughs> i heard somebody um from, could have been uh 
Chinese whispers this story and kind of how many times it had been recycled. But somebody went to Broadstand and there was a rope already there. Somebody had left the rope behind. So I was just thinking, my goodness me, just kind of a, a yank on that. And it's not as kind of secure as you hoped it would be. That's quite a scary prospect. Are you familiar with that, that area of the Lake City? That's it's quite intimidating. That's, I think, uh, the Broadstand. No, but I remember seeing a picture of when Beth did it, of her going into the harness and me thinking, I don't think I've ever seen anyone that a <laughs> shot like that from a Bob Graham round before. That's not what you're doing, Gary. No way. I'm straight up <laughs> Lord's Rake. <laughs> I stood at the bottom and looked up and just thought, no, that's not that's not for me. But the next thing, which isn't for me, I'm sure when you came off Blencathra, you did what is known as the parachute route which isn't your classic Horsfeld or, or Doddigfeld. Was that a, a conscious decision or your, you know, your kind of paces on the day just ran off the edge and you, and you followed them? No, no, that was a conscious decision. And I'd, I'd tried both, I'd tried Horsfeld and the parachute a few times and yeah, just felt like it was quicker, to be honest, especially yeah. if when Horsfeld's a bit wet and greasy, I yeah. think running on wet and greasy heather, <laughs> And a few rocks is better than just rocks. Yeah. Um, and once you know a good line down, and I was lucky on the day, I had I guys who knew the way to to follow, um, but I had wrecked it, so I, I knew roughly where I was going. Um, it seemed faster to me, but but who knows? <laughs> I mean, it's not worth like um, worrying about too much because it's, it's you know we're talking like uh, maybe a minute, yeah, two minutes at the most difference. <laughs> so. Um, yeah, who knows exactly if it was faster, but it was. Yeah, I, I just, it, I was, I was happy with it. So, and that's the way that my pace is new. So, oh my goodness, because yeah. I've been scrutinising everybody's route they did. Kim Collison, yourself, Killian, and when I saw your line off, uh, off Blancathra, I just thought, oh my goodness me, <laughs> I didn't fancy that. Did Did you have a favourite leg? Normally, I prefer leg. Four, I think whether I preferred it on the day I don't know <laughs> um I can't I mean I would say they were all enjoyable on the day um but yeah leg three or four in general are the most interesting legs so I yeah they're the ones that I'd look forward to in training leg one would always be a bit meh, I'm not not that keen on it. It's a bit boring. Yeah. I wouldn't get excited about running that in training, but legs three and four, yeah, they're, yeah. they're always always good, providing the weather's okay. Last uh, Bob Graham round question, and a shout out for Solomon, I suppose. What footwear did you use on the Bob Graham round? Do you remember? Uh, yes. I actually had a custom shoe, so I, I used the S-Lab Ultra um, with a... S Lab Speed outsole. Oh. Um, but saying that, that was before the new Cross S Lab Cross um, came on the market. Okay. And the Cross now, I think, is the best Salomon shoe for a Bob Graham. And if I did it again, I'd wear the Cross. <laughs> S Lab Cross. S Lab <laughs> Cross order four pairs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> Excellent. Thanks for all that. I, I love I love the way it's got the like the built-in um gator so you don't have to um, worry about getting debris in your shoes. Yeah. Th th there's a real shearly descent off Scarfell. Um and if you get to the bottom of there without a stone in your shoe, you're doing you're doing well. So that a gator would be a good Yeah, yeah, you won't with the cross. Good. They're awesome. You're right, he's sold. At he's Tabasco. Sold. <laughs> <laughs> talking about uh talking about kit. Beth, what would be your sort of, um, I, I'm intrigued as a Salomon sponsored athlete um, and you see the pictures of these massive bags of kit. Is that, is that real life? Do you get a ton of kit every season? And what is your favorite bit of kit that, um, that you get given that you get to wear and that's something you would always wear, always go to? Um, yeah, we get a fair amount of kit I suppose <laughs> um it's great that with shoes certainly on the international team we get to choose exactly which shoes we want so it's not like we get given those mm. shoes that we won't 
use and not enough of the ones we do use. So we do get to choose what shoes we want, which is great because you can work out exactly what you need and you don't get stuff you don't want to use. Um, uh, my favorite bit of kit. Well, the reason I, I started running for Salomon was the shoes. Um, it's obviously the most important thing if you're yeah. um, going to work with a brand. So for me, it's the S-Lab Ultra. Um, they're the shoes that I need the most pairs of because <laughs> they're the ones I use, <laughs> use the most. Um, and I absolutely love them. Um, How many yeah. pairs do you have on the go at the moment? <laughs> well, I had to ration myself. Oh, of course. Somewhat yes, being not out here. But I do have more shoes here than I do tops and shorts combined. <laughs> it's pretty hot, isn't it? You just need a vest and a... You don't need to wear much. Um, I've got three pairs of S-Lab Ultras with me. Um, I've got two pairs of the new Ultra Glide, which are coming out very soon. They're like a hoka style salomon shoe Ooh, in my opinion they feel better than any hokas i've ever tried but i'm biased um <laughs> some pulsars the esla pulsars are great um the index uh index one the new recyclable shoe okay. um is is in my suitcase uh what else? I'm sure there's more. <laughs> I'd be interested as I was going through the airport scanner, all these, they probably think you're trying to evade custom tax or something. <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't get those into France now. They'd be like, that's 400 euros per shoe. Uh, we just make, we're just going to make that up. We're just going to make that up. Um, how has it been now, you're spending this time in the States, how has it been um, nutritionally wise? Um, have you had to sort of adapt your diet? What sort of diet do you normally follow um, as a, as a full-time athlete? Um, how has it been sort of changing where you're living? Um, Americans are famous for their portions. I know when I went to Hawaii and they'd be like, I would order a salad and it came... <laughs> Like the size of my head. Um, ha ha have you had some more time to make some uh, nutritious meals as well, but having that little bit more time for training and recovery? Um, I, I mean, where I've been in the US are typically the healthiest places to live where, where um, I mean, I notice it like when I go through airports that like there's a lot of overweight people, but where I've actually been staying in California and in Flagstaff, everyone is super slim. Everyone is super healthy. Um, no one's really eating fast food. Yeah, yeah. Um, we still have supermarkets that will sell all the normal things. So I wouldn't say my diet's really changed. Um, I guess I have been hanging out with a lot of girls who are uh, like they I guess there's a bigger variety of like health foods that you can get mm. here like yeah. eating foods that I've never even heard of like people are obsessed with fermented food here like kombucha mm. and kimchi and all these things which I have been trying and yeah um <laughs> it's all it's all good um but yeah on the whole I wouldn't say that my diet's changed that much I do, I mean, at home, I eat what I would say, like 95% plant-based. Um, I don't eat meat. We have chickens at home, so I eat, I eat eggs um, and a little bit of dairy every now and then. I'm not super strict on anything, but um, yeah, that's largely what I eat. What about your sort of race day fuel? Do you, uh, are you a gels gels and sort of fluid uh, calorie consumption or are you more sort of a solid food or does it depend on the race i'm yeah very much a gel person <laughs> doing a race anyway um i use spring energy gels um which are um they're they're different from your standard maltodextrin gels because they've got a bit more complex carbohydrate in them so most of them are like rice based with some fruit or something like that yeah. um and i can take them you know for an hour for 20 hours 30 hours however long <laughs> i need to can you really yeah. can you really yeah well wow, that's amazing i i use those yeah. too i love them and they're always yeah. they, they're quite refreshing i don't find i get bored of them because i just change the change the flavor yeah i 
I agree. I don't get bored. Um, everyone is amazed that I can take so many. Um, and I do, like in a UTMB, I'll have a bit of noodle soup at aid stations or something. But um, And, yeah, I do drink Coke as well at aid stations during a race. I, never in training, but it's for some reason, it is always a thing <laughs> I <Yeah>. want, <laughs> um, especially when it's hot and I'm at, at the aid stations. Do you hit the Coke quite early into a race or do you like, I've got to get so far before I go down that I start shouting Coca-Cola at the crew? I wouldn't, yeah, I'll take it as early as I feel like yeah. it. I don't think I necessarily, I necessarily I try and hold off. <laughs> That's the only time I drink dandelion and burdock and Coca-Cola is uh, out of the back of a boot at a checkpoint somewhere <laughs> on a race. Yeah, it's <laughs> yeah yeah it's great i love it <laughs> i always like to ask um our guests what they have recently binge watched or well, just not be binge watch or what you're enjoying currently maybe on netflix or amazon anything like that any good shows that you could recommend <laughs> um well i have to say it's been very hard for me not being able to finish line of duty being over here Oh. it's impossible it's it's not possible to watch it i have done all the re it's just not possible to watch it in the u.s there must be someone listening that can help beth out with this this is terrible <laughs> please please if anyone knows how to how I'll to send you a lace an old lace from her salmon trainer if you can <laughs> you can get football all over the world surely someone can stream line of duty <laughs> i oh, i just don't know how um so I have struggled with finding good things to watch, if I'm honest. Um, I have recently watched Designated Survivor on Netflix. Um, yeah, it's it's good. It's not Line of Duty, but that is the thing that I've watched most recently. <laughs> I've never watched one episode of Line of Duty. Am I, like, the only person out there? Um, well, I assume so, yes. <laughs> yes, yes, Gary. <laughs> You are, well, we've only just started. We started from the beginning, and I think we're on about series five. But I can't watch it every night because otherwise I can't get to sleep because I start thinking that I'm in some sort of terrible crime drama. I'm not making a stand so or anything. It's taking us a while. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not making a stand. It's just it's not on the roster. <laughs> no, it's not kid-friendly. It's not for the kids. And any guilty no. pleasures? I saw some wonderful pictures of you with a massive pint of beer around the Mute Hall, Keswick, last year. Any um, go-to guilty pleasures after a race or just something you can't say no to? Mine's a cheese pasty. Um, it, well, I'll be honest, about that pint of beer at the Bob Graham, I think I managed about three sips before I had to give it to my husband. <laughs> he was like, do, no, that's enough, that's enough. <laughs> I, I do enjoy a beer, but not straight after a race. <laughs> And actually, the thing that I most enjoy at the end of a race is stopping eating. Um, like, I don't want to eat anything. Yeah. <laughs> um, like, it's a question always people ask me. And, like, 24 hours later, just all the carbs, yeah. pizza, but lots of salad as well. Nothing, absolutely nothing sweet. Um after this is going to make me sound really, really sad, but after the last UTMB, um, we went to a bar and I had a green tea. It's all I wanted. <laughs> I think at that was, point, your body is um, telling you exactly what yeah, you want. Yeah, I need some tea. I was going to ask you, my next question was, are you a tea drinker? And if so, have you taken tea with you? not a massive tea drinker I'm more of a coffee drinker and this is a problem um I have to say the coffee like your standard American coffee is not the oh, coffee no. I like to drink <laughs> and you define like if you define a cafe that sells good coffee you need to you need to do a lot of research you can't just rock up to any old cafe yeah yeah and and last last year, my husband and I did invest in a coffee machine um, after many years of research. <laughs> and now I'm like a coffee snob um, and I'm really fussy. And yeah, it's something that I've struggled with most, the altitude and 
<laughs> not coffee. having <laughs> not having like an abundance of really good coffee readily available. <laughs> I would have thought Flagstaff Altitude would have been coffee line of duty. I would have thought Flagstaff would have been great for for coffee. That kind yeah. of there, there are there are some good coffee places here. Yeah, but you have to seek them out. Australia, that's where you go for coffee. There you have it. Melbourne, Melbourne, yes. Melbourne yeah. coffee culture. That can be your next stop. Okay. <laughs> um, so all your focus, I know, right now is on Western states. But uh, what what are your plans for after that? Are you heading back home, or are you staying out for a little bit longer? No, we'll head straight back home because we're still hoping to have this wedding. The wedding. I'm so sorry. Yes. No. What second shape time. Be in second for the time. And lean. Um, with terrible sports bra tan lines. <laughs> chaffing. Maybe the chaffing will have healed by then. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, I still don't really believe it's going to happen. I won't believe it's going to happen until Ooh. we actually know. You know that the restrictions are going to you'll be further unlocked by the, on the 21st of June or whenever June. it is. Yeah. Um, yeah. So heading home, uh, and yeah, the wedding will take some organizing cause it'll all be last minute and it's very much a DIY <laughs> affair. <laughs> <laughs> um, and and then uh, my sister and my brother-in-law are planning to do a Bob Graham when we get home as well, which will be super fun Ooh. to support. Um, and then all going well, I'll go out to the Alps at the end of July or beginning of September, uh, August, um, and we'll have a little Salomon UTMB camp. Um, and then ideally stay out in the Alps until UTMB. Um, and what what you've done so many fabulous races, so many wonderful adventures you've already had, but what's still on the bucket list that you would uh, you would still sort of in your future in your running career? Hard rock, hard rocks, instantaneous, hundred percent. Yeah, I mean it's it's the own it's kind of an obvious. I don't need to explain it really. Like it's the the big hundred miler that I haven't done. Yeah. Um, and I would love to be there. Oh, wow, that would be great. Um, it would be cool, really cool. Uh, I don't think it will suit me because of the altitude, but who cares? I just want I to I didn't want to mention it. that. I was just going to go for it. Don't worry about that. Just go for it. It'll be fine. Yeah. Eat loads of gel. Up the gel. Six of yeah. gels an hour. You, <laughs> you won't notice. You can't breathe. <laughs> well, awesome. I think um, that's, that's it for most, Beth. Uh, thanks very much fingers crossed the lockdown eases a bit more in June um, and the wedding goes ahead as, you, as, as you'd hope um, yeah thanks for coming on the show I really appreciate your time this, evening, or this morning for you um, yeah take care thanks a lot cool alright thank, thank you guys best of luck best of luck at Western States we'll all be behind you yeah and you cheering too, you too. on thank you thank you Thanks for listening. And if you're enjoying this episode, then pop a post on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Also leave a five-star review on Apple Podcast, Spotify, or wherever you are tuning in from. Head over to YouTube too and subscribe to our channel. Well, that was fantastic there, Eddie. Really good to hear from Beth. Uh, I always love a bit of bug way around chat, so I could uh, listen to that kind of stuff all day. And great, you know, here we're building for the Western States, for the Canyons 100 and anyone who's interested, she's a really good follow on Strava too. So good luck, Beth, from everybody here under the hills. Right, what we got coming up? You've got a few, you've got a few races. Sabrina Vijay is still out on the fells. Yeah. Um, Should I tell you where she's at? Yeah, right. tell me where she's at. Well, well, well this by the time this goes out, this is, we're yeah, recording so, on Tuesday. Well, so. really. <laughs> well, anyway, Tuesday morning, she is just going. She's been on our Armbar Fell, and she's off to Great Crag. So that's where she's at. Currently. And the but, weather is... I mean, it's not perfect because it's hot, but um, it's not visibility like it was last time. No, no. So, fingers crossed by Friday, um, we might yeah. have had some news of that. Oh, fingers crossed! That'd be fantastic. I don't know, you know, I I don't know if she's on schedule or not. I've got no kind of feedback as far as that's concerned. But she's keep she's moving forward, so that's great. What else has got? I've got um, oh, Tsunami Ultra and the Tsunami Marathon. And the, I think Tsunami must be the brand, the name of the brand. But then we've got the Ultra, the Marathon, 16 Mile, 
the seven mile race and that's on the north devon and cornish coastlines that sounds lovely i don't know anything about that event but i've been to that part of the world twice and it is beautiful so so um yeah have a great time everyone doing that and i am a marshal actually so i know the trail outlaws pension half marathon is going off this weekend and that's a great little um there's some woods near Penshaw Monument. Penshaw Monument's quite a big local landmark. And, you know, you don't know sometimes how lovely the trails are on your doorstep. And Penshaw area is definitely really nice, but you just drive past it thinking oh, there's nothing there. But, yeah, it's a great, really great half marathon. I did the marathon once, and that was literally twice of the half marathon course. Oh, I don't like that. I don't oh, like no. a double lapper. <laughs> what's, your, what's your job as a volunteer? Are you pointing? I think and I'm in a I'm in a car park. I got I got the PDF. I'm in a car glamour, park. Glamour, the glamour. Yeah. High vis. Do, do, do you get to wear the high vest and then do the yeah. roll your window down, please? <laughs> yeah, great with the marshals. One day I will see it. people who haven't marshaled before. You know, I've done a few different events, and Trail Outlaws really treat you well. You get some goodies. You get free entry to another race, and they're just yeah, the great. You you really know what you're doing too. Sometimes I've turned up at races and thought. What am I doing? Where am I going? I don't even know the course. Where do I point people? You know exactly what you're doing with the trail outlaws. Biggest guys. thing, if you if you want to get into ultras or you've not been racing for a while, best thing to do is volunteer a race. Yeah. Maybe not at mile 94 of a 100-mile race if you've never done a 100-mile race because you'll never do one, but no. go at the earlier <laughs> stages. And a little bit of getting back to running for you. Just going to go as you feel. Yeah, yeah as I like to uh, tease some tips out of the resident coach, I, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I was go- I was going to start running as normal this week, but oh no, I, no, yeah. way too early. Yeah, well, it's I, I honestly this- would say two two weeks total off running. I know you you you're gonna ignore that, but you know after that huge effort, you can tell your body is going. Hey, that's all day. Yeah. Care. So any running that you do do has to be like really non impactful into that running, and I would keep it lots of little shorter ones. Okay. Anything over like 30, 40 minutes, you start, oh, it's not recovery. I've done that wrong already then. I know, <laughs> I saw that. <laughs> but what um, I'm doing, I'd steer it, because the Castle Eden Dean is really um, lovely trails, but it's like up and down, up and down. So what I'm doing, I'm staying quite flat trails. Yes. So I can have my road shoes on and just Rex and Football I. Football pitches are your sort of like... Yeah. yeah. And I, I always think the second week is almost harder because the first week you don't really want to do anything mm. and you're sort of glowing in the post race come down. Then the second week you crash further down, but you feel like you should be doing something because you want that you want that hormone lift back up don't you yeah yeah. but that's the week where you you know if you did have a if you did do a bit of biking i'd be like just do a little bit of spinning but keep it really short better to do little and often get that blood flow than to do something massive and walking as your friend even though as we said it's it's slow and dull but you just have to almost just get through this week don't you just get through this week and you're going to feel much better next week oh yeah but with just an effort easy. like that i think as you know as we're always still learning efforts like that you it the recovery is, takes longer than way long you know you're looking at like yeah. four to six weeks probably till sometimes you're it's in there too it's not all yeah, the heads the, the heads work so hard yeah. and you and i think that's where a lot of people go wrong is that we don't respect after a race um that and i'm i'm guilty of it and, and everybody that oh, we, all are, my goodness. we all are we want to get back out there we want to get back out running but um you know if Just, a marathoner if an olympic marathoner runs a marathon they always they're like two weeks total off you know yeah and they're i do say that i remember listening to the podcasts and see people like kip or you know, people who do for a living they wouldn't be they might do a few easy runs this week but that's that's as much as it. So yeah, it'll be just runs with the dog. I think I'll take take your advice. But I might get I might get drunk on Thursday. <gasps> Bob beer, Bob Graham round beers, kind of BG, just the BGRB. <laughs> yeah. Um, how many pints does it take you to fill the uh, not many? The warmth? <laughs> I had half a bottle of wine on Sunday night um, and I didn't want to get up on more. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> it doesn't take much. Uh, I think four. That's it. I'm on a. Two. Oh, I'd yeah. be under the table. <laughs> it's a sniff of the cork for me. <laughs> It'd be just nice, you know, a lot of the guys who were there on um, the weekend, obviously. Um, and we used to have a drink after a run on a Thursday. So now we can do that again. 
that's what we're going to do. But no, running. <clears throat> I said to Neil, are we running and drinking? He's like, sent me a text back with his face with crying and tears like, no. <laughs> no, <laughs> he's sensible. No way, man. I'm just going to have my beers. And then what is it? It's Father's Day at the weekend, actually. So Just I'll... posted my dad's card and don't have high hopes that's going to arrive by Sunday, but he's quite oh, used to crossed. that. Card in the post, dad. You know, he's all right. He's great. I'm glad that's just, just me. That's rubbish. Might, if I didn't live so close to my dad, yeah, he'd, his card would be late too. <laughs> yeah, it's just, oh, and, and and the post now, since COVID, is ter- I don't know if it is in the UK, but in France, I posted my dad's birthday cards and stuff in a little package. It's in May and it arrived last week. Oh, <laughs> like six weeks late. I mean, where's it been? What? <laughs> Australia? I know. I've sent some jobs overseas and they just sit in customs for a, i think there's like it's probably politics they're just like ah oh, let's, 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 let's not, hold on to this medal yeah trophy that's charity. the brexit <laughs> that's the brexit pile over there <laughs> kicking around for two weeks in the corner <gasps> just saying <laughs> not get political on the podcast political podcast a different podcast isn't it? <laughs> so when yeah when do you are you probably i'm sorry for mentioning when do you head off then is it today no, tomorrow. So I'm going to finish up all my packing and, um, and yeah, we're going to get up super early tomorrow, like four o'clock in the morning, oh. but breakfast. And then we're going to drive to Chamonix. We're actually not starting in Chamonix. We're going to start in Les Uches, um, because it's a nicer, uh, otherwise you have to run the long sort of trail along to Les Uches. Um, we're going anti-clockwise, which is the most popular way in the way of the UTMB. So yeah, yeah we're going to start as early as possible so that because the snow is going to take us that little bit longer, we're not stressing yeah. to get to this. So we're going to try and do the first day in like 12 hours. Because you will also want to be able to like, you know, got to keep you up to date on the gram. Yeah. And <laughs> if there's a nice refuge, stop for a Coke. Um, and we're all different abilities, you know, got strengths and weaknesses. So we don't want, you know. You're not going to ditch anybody, are you ready? I'm going to leave them in your wake. Well. Like your half marathon. I've seen you. <laughs> <laughs> They're all like, Eddie, you know, you're always, you're going to be the strongest, and you know, and I'm like, oh dear, you haven't seen Eddie on day three of a multi day. Um, so yeah, we want to just take our time. So yeah, we're going to start early tomorrow and get into, um, get sort of round the back of uh, Mont Blanc tomorrow um, and then into Switzerland the next day and then hopefully back by Friday night and then we'll have to drive back and we're already pulling straws as to who drives the van. <laughs> What's the forecast? Have you done the Beautiful. The oh. Hot, hot. few localised storms, which is really normal. Um, and what's so the mountain temperature? You know, we the snow up there, but what are you looking at? Yeah, it's like 25. Oh, well, wow. it's easily like 25 degrees here. And it's not cold overnight, which is really good. It's like 15, 16 degrees. Oh, my goodness. So um, we might have a few, like, storms later on in the evening. So that's why hopefully we'll be nearer the refuges um, yeah. or just have to go to head down low if there are storms. And, yeah, hopefully back on Friday. Well, yeah, it'll be late. Drive back. No beers, probably then. <laughs> Sleepy Eddie. Oh my god, I'm going to be a bit broken, aren't I? That's a lot, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> uh, yeah, back for the, for a weekend of then. I, I think uh, Dad, after being on three days solo kids duty, will be yeah, uh, hand them straight over. Football. Oh, did you watch the football? Do you watch the football? No, no, I'm terrible. Uh, yeah, I don't watch it. Not really. Well, that's what he'll be doing, and I'll be on trying probably trying to watch i'm only going to take one set of kit i'm not sure if that's I got, <laughs> I got i'm taking one set of kit but some deodorant is that okay this little cancels out Commander, uh, take some wet wipes or something. well because you have to take a lot you know i want to take you know full waterproofs hat gloves for any mountain bivy bag it's quite a yeah. lot of safety kit first aid safety kit we have to carry too so i was like the actual base layer mm. And from doing multi days, I don't know about you, but like once you put, it's horrible putting on smeggy kit, but the minute it's on and you start running, it's only going to get yeah. sweaty again. So I don't really see the point. I have got fresh pants, obviously. Okay. Three, but, there's know, a limit. There's a limit <laughs> to my disgustingness. But not an animal. I'm, <laughs> I'm not an animal. Uh, yeah, so I'm super excited, a little bit nervous about the snow crossing, but I will just hold on tight. And hopefully back to tell you oh, all stay about safe, it. No, don't make any, you know, sensible decisions. Great content, though. Great content, though. If well, I... yeah. Not... 
<laughs> no, we will be very sensible. We with one girl is a climbing guide, one girl is training to be a mountain international mountain leader, lots of mountain experience, and we already did it, you know, we'll all make the call together. And if we think it's not safe to cross, yeah, we will find another route. So we will be safe. We'll be back. Very good. Yes. Please come. Right. Back. Rest up. <laughs> Enjoy your beers. Don't do anything I wouldn't do. No. <laughs> what like not change clothes for three days <laughs> maybe you should do that in sort of like solidarity oh yeah <laughs> no <laughs> you know what's weird i don't know if you do this but when i've not run god this is i'm so, so good you don't have a shower yeah it's my hygiene <laughs> it's bad isn't it because you kind of forget like my husband's really good because he gets up the first thing he like has a shower and I'm like, oh, yeah. that's a lot of effort. Yeah. I'm not sweated yet. But yeah. then when you're not training, you're like, oh, how many the days? Gym. So I, <laughs> when do I wash? <laughs> Maybe wash that team. might make you feel a bit better if you scrub up a bit. <laughs> Definitely yeah. before your beers. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We'll have a shave. I do the get rid of the grey and the and get, get that done. Oh, that's not so bad. I'll do that one. So I've got my Chia Charge t-shirt out at the pub. <laughs> no. I put, I put, yeah, I put a proper shirt. Oh, I put a shirt oh yeah, on. proper shirt. Yeah, and Instagram that. <laughs> People wouldn't recognise me. <laughs> wouldn't recognise you. I remember we're twittering today, but I remember when I used to do parents' evening, and obviously I was in a tracksuit all the time, no makeup, you know, like this really. And then parents' evening, and you know, smart, not even put heels on, and the kids used to be like, we don't even recognise you. Be doing it, I'd like go and look, must look terrible most days in that tracksuit. But as runners, you know, when we get dressed up, look all right, yeah, in a blur, put a filter on. <laughs> I always think it's weird when you see a runner in non running clothes, it's a bit uncomfortable, isn't it? Yeah, it's like the PE teacher, not in PE kit, it's, like, huh? it's all wrong. <laughs> it's all wrong, right? Have a good week. Hopefully, next time I speak to you, you'll be fully fit ready to yeah. attack your next and you have a great time i'm super jealous but have a lovely time <laughs> what was All that waiting for you episode 42 i hope you enjoyed enjoyed the show everybody i did it was super good to catch up with beth um yeah my name's gary thwaite i'm eddie sutton and let's run to the hills <laughs>